Welcome to Electro Online. When a system experiences damping, energy is removed from the system. Here's an example of what could happen. We could have an object that's oscillating up and down, but the object is suspended inside a viscous fluid. And so therefore, there's some resistance to its motion and it will lose energy. There's three kinds of damping that can occur. We can have what we call underdamping, critical damping, or overdamping. The underdamping case is the, the most useful case. There's a lot, of, a lot of applications for that. And so what happens is that you still see the object oscillating, but the amplitude of the oscillation becomes smaller and smaller as it's losing energy. The rate at which those oscillations decay or become smaller is an exponential decay curve. And so we're going to have to find an equation for this curve, and we're going to have to find an equation for the new angle of frequency because when there's damping involved, the natural frequency oscillation actually gets becomes slowed down, and so we have a smaller value for the omega, the smaller value for the oscillation frequency as well, and the period becomes longer. Critical damping is where you essentially have, uh, so the, the object experiences damping, and it comes down and smoothly reaches the uh, equilibrium point over time and doesn't overshoot it. So the difference between under damping and critical damping is that the function here, the damping motion, doesn't overshoot the equilibrium point, otherwise you have what we call under damping. And then we have overdamping, where the viscous force or the viscous fluid is so thick, for example, that it's not able to complete even the first oscillation. So it decreases slowly over time, but it takes a long time to, lead, to reach the equilibrium point, and so that's considered overdamping. So what we need to do then is we need to take our differential equation, add an additional term to that, and then see that there's going to be three different solutions to the three different cases of our original differential equation describing the motion, but this time with an additional term that describes the damping factor, that has the damping factor in there. So we'll go ahead and show you a couple more videos on how to utilize the equations that come out of that new solution. And that is how it's done.